6.4 graphs of the sine and cosine functions. So these are graphed by finding key points. And actually, all the trig functions are graphed this way. Uh, so we'll try to do this nice and easy first. And the key points come from the unit circle. So let's look at the unit circle a little bit. So let's say that this is a unit circle. Wow, that's awful. You can do a little bit better than that. Right, that's a little better. So here are the key points on the unit circle. So 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. So this would be at 0. This is at pi over 2. This one's at pi. This one's at 3 pi over 2. And then we're back. 2 pi, right? So full period. Okay, so the y values are the signs. So if I look at the y values, then the sign starts at 0, goes up to 1, back down to 0, down to negative 1, and then we're back at 0, and we are at a full period. So those would be the values that you use to graph it. So putting that on the coordinate grid looks pretty much like this. So 1, 2, 3, 4 tick marks this way. That's 2 pi. That's the halfway point, so that's pi. So that's pi over 2. That's 3 pi over 2. So the sign starts at 0, goes up to 1, back to 0, down to a negative 1, and then back to 0. Don't stop it at those points because it's continuous. Okay. If I look at the cosine, then the cosine is the x value. So the cosine starts at 1, goes to 0, goes to the negative 1, back to 0, and then to 1. So the cosine looks like this. So the cosine goes to 1 and a negative 1, also in 1, 2, 3, 4 steps. 1, 0, negative 1, 0, back to 1. And again, make it loop to show that it's continuous. And then I often just mark the halfway points. So that's 2 pi and that's pi. And that's what they look like. I forgot to put that that's 1 and that's a negative 1. Okay. All right. Change one thing. So I'm going to change one thing, and that's I'm going to have 2 thirds of x there. I am going to rewrite this a little bit. Okay. So if you have 2 thirds of x, you first start by finding the period. So um, the normal period, and I guess I should have added that for both of these. So right now, the period for both of these is 2 pi, right? So it goes from 0 to 2 pi through all the values. OK, well, what x values do I need to plug in to make it go from 0 all the way to 2 pi? So when is 2 over 3x equal to 2 pi? So that's what I'm asking myself. So if I do that, then you would end up doing 2 pi times 3 over 2 to get rid of the fraction. And when you do that, you'll see that it takes 3 pi okay, to get all the way out to, to a value of 2 pi. Um, so the shortcut to that is, and this would be nice if you sort of have that memorized, is you just take 2 pi which is the normal period, and you divide by the number that we're multiplying by. And again, when you do that, you end up with 2 pi times 3 pi over 2. Those cancel. So the period is going to be 3 pi. So that means that if I start at 0, I'll go through all my values by the time I get to 3 pi. Okay. So the next thing then that you want to find out actually is what do you count by? The, so it says here, divide the interval into four equal parts so that you're able to find the maximum, minimum, and the places where it crosses the x-axis. Morning. Is there a laundry room unlocked? It's unlocked. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> so to do that, you take 3 pi and you multiply by 1 over 4, and you'll get 3 pi over 4. So this is what I call my count by. Okay, so over here, what did I really count by? Well, I went from 0 to pi over 2 to pi to 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. So every interval, every step is pi over 2 here. So here, every step was worth pi over 2. So here, every step has got to be worth 3 pi over 4. 
And then here you would be at 6 pi over 4, because 3 pi over 4 plus another one is 6 pi over 4, but that reduces, right? So it's 3 pi over 2, and 6 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 is 9 pi over 4, which does not reduce. And then you're at 3 pi, because 12 pi over 4, which would be the next one, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay. Um, usually this line here disappears, but I'll use it once so that you can sort of see what happens. So if I plug in 0, 2 thirds of that is still 0. If I do 2 thirds times 3 pi over 4, we get those cancel. So that's 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. And then if I use 3 pi over 2, so 2 thirds times, I'm sorry, 3 pi over 2, so those cancel, and those cancel, so that just leaves me with pi. And then if I use 9 pi over 4 times 3 pi over 2, so let's see, um, did I do that right? I think so. No, it should be 2 pi over 3, right? I'm not seeing any cancellations, so... I was wondering what was going wrong there. So that's a 2, and that's a 3, so I'm at 3 pi over 2. And then the last one, if you use 12 pi over 4, and I multiply it by 2 over 3, so 2, 2 cancels. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2 pi. And this is the whole reason that we set up the period first in the count bias, because look, 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. That's exactly this over here. So we recreated this line by using the period and your count by. Okay, so you want to recreate that line. So that means that these values here, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1, so these values here should be repeated in the table that I make. So it actually should be repeated in all tables that you make for sines and co or for cosines. Okay? So the cosine of 0 was 1, right? And then the cosine of pi over 2 was 0. Then it goes to negative 1, back up to 0, and then the 1. So usually I don't do this line. I just wanted you to see this once so that you understand why do you find a period first and the count bys. It just makes your life a lot easier. So and then you can graph it. And once you have it, graphing it is very fast. So, because you know you have four equal intervals, and in this case, your last interval ended at 3 pi, so the halfway point was 3 pi over 2. You started at 1 here, right? Then you went to 0, then you went to negative 1, then you went to 0, and then you went back up to 1. And so a very distinctive pattern from the cosine emerges again. Okay, that changes one more thing. What does this negative 3 do? Well, so look, just make sure that you see this. So this is this first part over here, and we just graphed up there, right? So we found the period, so we did 2 pi divided by 2 thirds, okay, and then gave us 3 pi. We multiplied it by 1 over 4, so we're counting by 3 pi over 4 still. So this is still 0. That's 3 pi over 4. This was then 3 pi over 2, and this was 9 pi over 4, and then this ended up at 3 pi. And we already know that the cosine of those values, well, at 0, it's 1, then it goes to 0, then a negative 1, then 0, and then 1. So this negative 3 on the outside is just a transformation. So that just multiplies this. So negative 3, 0, 3, 0, and a negative 3. Now, usually you don't, you know, sometimes you will, but, you know, you don't always get the cosine of 2x over 3 first and then just one single transformation but I want you to the see I wanted you to see um, what the negative 3 does and that's really all it does it it just changes and we'll talk about what it changes here in a second it has a special name and then you create your graph okay so I need a little more room on this one because I need to be able to go from 3 to a negative 3 um, and so the 3 here made it go higher and lower, and the negative flipped it, right? So this graph, if that's uh, 1, 2, 3, if that's 3, and then that's negative 3. So this graph is going to start here. So 1, 2, 3, 4 intervals, 
ends there, that's the halfway point. So this one starts here, goes up, reaches its maximum, goes back down, and it's back at its starting point. So here is what this particular graph looks like. And it's definitely still a cosine pattern. It just started at a different point. But, you know, if you continue this, old starting point should have been here. So we just move the graph a little bit. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so the difference between this one and the previous one is that this one, from if I look from, from the axis, it has a height of 3. So the height of this little hump is 3. And the height of this hump is actually also 3. And that height has a name. That's called the amplitude. So the amplitude here is 3. And that just the amplitude is just... Well, here's how high or how tall is the curve from the center line that answers that question. So that one, it's 3. So here, it was just worth 1. And that's also what it was worth over here, right? Both of these, actually the sign also has an amplitude of 1. Okay, so both of these have an amplitude of 1. Well, since the change in the middle, so since um, so this one was just a cosine of 2 thirds x, right? So this change did not affect the amplitude. The only thing that affects the amplitude is this number over here. So that makes it pretty easy if I just ask you what an amplitude is. Um, I don't know why I have it in this order, but for example here, the amplitude, how high or how does it go? Well, it goes up 2. So for y equals 2 times the sine of x, the amplitude is going to be 2. For y equals a negative 4 times the cosine of x, I know it says a negative 4, but the amplitude is still going to be considered 4, because it does go down, but how far does it go down first? So that distance was 4. Okay, so how do you graph sines and cosines? So the summary, um, I would find a period first. Okay, that's step 1. Find a period. Step two is find the count by. You know, that's the interval that you're going, the interval that you're going to use to count in your table. Okay, make a table using the count by value, and then four. Use either the sine or the cosine pattern. So the sine pattern, those are the y values that we're interested in. So it went from 0 to 1 to 0 to a negative 1 back to 0. And for the cosine, the pattern was so it starts at 1, goes to 0, down to negative 1, up to 0, back up to 1, and then 5, and then finish the table with the other transformations if they're there. So we saw one that it did and one that it did not with the other transformations. So y equals negative 3 cosine of 2x over 3. That's one of those other transformations. And that's it. Okay, so quick summary of sines and cosines. So the sine has a domain from negative infinity to infinity, okay, all real numbers, right? So that's shown a little bit better over here, so keep in mind that this thing continues. The range is from a negative 1 to 0, so negative 1, the lowest, 1 is the highest point. You create this table by making a graph. I mean, you create the graph by making a table. Uh, the regular sign starts at 0, it finishes at 2 pi, so you count by pi over 2, so 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. Um, this one over here I don't do a lot with. Its x-intercepts are the form of n times pi, where n is an integer. They just, you know, the regular sign has intercepts at 0, at 2 pi, at 3 pi, at 4 pi, etc., etc. And then this is a useful piece of information here. So it's symmetric with respect to the origin, right? So this point here mirrors into that point there. So that means that, for example, if you know that the sine of pi over 3 is 0 0.87 because it's odd you know that the sine of a negative pi over 3 is a negative 0.87 okay and that's the sine so for the cosine very much the same same domain right same range it is also continuous uh, 
here the intercepts are pi over two unit or pi over two, three pi over two, etc. etc. Five pi over two. It's a little more complicated for me. It's one reason I don't have these quite memorized. Table sets up the same way, still count by the same pi over two here, one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two, four pi over two. And the big difference here then is that it's respect to the y-axis. So it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, just like x squared. So that makes it an even function. So if you are pi over 6 to the right, which would be like right there, then at pi over 6 to the left, you're at the same y value. So these y values are identical. And that's it. Thanks.